A very happy Friday night and welcome to the FC Cincinnati playoff preview show. Yes, you heard that right. The orange and blue have qualified for the 2022 MLS Cup playoffs. They will take on the New York Red Bulls tomorrow at noon on Star 64. We'll have all that information for you as we go through the show. A lot of good things planned tonight, but Kevin, the big moment this team worked so hard for all season long. On Sunday, decision day, they go and get a convincing win against D.C. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was all about winning, right? It was about the result. Um, you know, the performance itself w was good as well. And, and a lot of goals convincing fashion uh, as far as uh, FC Cincinnati is concerned. But the most important thing for the fans, for this coaching staff, the club, and the ownership group was getting that win. And what a historic moment it was for the entire city. Absolutely. Somebody, something that everybody had been waiting for, right? That moment to be in the playoffs for the orange and blue. We have a lot to come here in the next hour. Interviews with general manager Chris Albright. We have Pat Noonan coming up. But first things first, Roman Celentano, the goalkeeper, rookie out of Indiana, has been sensational. Incredible. Again, I think, you know, a young talent, a talent that was scouted, but I don't think many people kind of expected the performances that he's had this season. A guy that's going to continue to develop. Uh, a guy that has a massive ceiling and a bright future ahead of him. Well, Cincinnati, no doubt, has found a rising star in goalkeeper Roman Celentano. He sits down with our sideline reporter, Alex Steck. Roman, reflect back on your first year as a pro. How did your expectations kind of differ from how it went? Well, obviously, I wasn't expecting to play as much as I have this year, uh, which is a good thing. It was uh, unfortunate the way, you know, things worked out and how I got into the into the spot, but I was just happy that I was able to be ready for the opportunity and to take whatever came. And I was just looking forward to each game and just getting experience and just staying in there. So it was, it was, it was a great time this year. What was the biggest challenge in making that leap from the college level to the professional level? I would just say the speed of play and the speed of thought. Uh, the ball moves a lot faster. Everyone knows what they're doing and what they're doing before the ball even gets to them. So for me, it was just learning how to play at the speed of these guys and how to think a couple plays ahead instead of just playing what's presented because a lot more goes on at this level than at college. You talk about how you got that starting spot. You get drafted second overall, go through preseason, beginning of the year, and then you're set to start your first Open Cup game in April and just less than a week later, you end up starting against LAFC, the Supporter Shield winners this year. You have a great performance and you carry that starting spot as a 21-year-old, now 22 years old throughout the rest of the season. What are you most proud of this year? I would say just taking the opportunity and staying relatively consistent. Obviously, some stuff hasn't gone as well as I'd like and some stuff has, has gone all right within the games, but I just think for the most part for me, it was just about staying consistent and just not getting too high or too low with how things have gone and just try to focus on what I can control and just try to do the best for the team. So I was just proud of how I've just, you know, stepped into the role maybe from a level of the college that's not as you know, I don't, people don't respect college as much, but you know, just I just believed in myself and I just stepped into this professional level and just went with it. Who's been a mentor for you this year? Paul Rogers, goalkeeper coach. He's, he's been the man for me, so he's great with all of us. I, I think he's one of the best in the league, if not the best. So I'm just grateful to be working with him and he's just helped me with everything from just the mental side of the game to actual technique and everything within the game. So he's just been the man. Is this locker room a part of any other team you've been a part of before? It's different. Obviously, I'm, I was used to more just, you know, guys like kind of like me just growing up in Chicago and playing in college. But now it's great to get different, you know, backgrounds with guys like Brenner and Obi, guys from different places and plenty of different experiences with Harris that's left us midseason. He was a great locker room guy. So, I mean, the guys that I've met this year helped me become a better professional. Is there anyone you've become close with that maybe you didn't expect at the beginning of the year? Yeah, I just think, I mean, so working with all these guys, obviously the goalkeeper union strong. So getting closer with Alec and, you know, Evan that's coming, and Kenneth and Beckham, all these guys are great. But also just, just learning from different guys on the team. Like I've tried to just pick the brains of guys like Jeff or Matt that have been at the highest level, more or less, and just pick their brains and try to learn from them. There's been a big focus on shifting the culture and improving it year after year here. And you only have experience under Pat Noonan and Chris Albright and the culture that they've instilled within this team. What do you think is special about the culture here now? I just think there's a, a high standard and a winning mentality. I think Pat and Chris have brought that over from where they've come from. And I just think that they don't let standards drop. And 
if things aren't going a certain way and players are getting down, they'll, they'll get on us and they'll just hold us to a high standard and we have to meet that. So we have the quality to meet that. It's just about doing the little things and keeping our heads about us and I think our ceiling's pretty high. You talk about how you've kind of develop the the speed of play is, is different here at the professional level and your shot stopping ability has always been there what do you think that is something you have improved upon throughout the season a part of your game that's gotten a lot better i just think my game management and my understanding of the game at this level obviously uh, the speed of play is as like you said it has increased but it's just about learning to manage the game when we're up a goal or even if we're down a goal how I can play differently, how I can communicate and handle myself differently within the team, so I think game management. A lot of jaw-dropping moments throughout this season where you come up with a huge save and we're all amazed and impressed. What's your favorite one from this season? I would say away in New York City, um, the header save in the first half, so I think that was my favorite. Can you personally. walk me through that one? Yeah, we were, I mean, they were all over us that first half and we are playing away on a baseball field, so it was a totally different experience, the shorter field, so they were just on us. And like halfway through the half, they just kept putting the pressure on, and then the cross came into the box to, I think, Talos Magno, from like 12 yards out or so, and he heads it to my right, kind of bottom corner, and I just, I don't know, just move my feet a little bit, and I just dive and I reach back, and I just kind of pull it out of the, out of the goal, and then just get it for whatever happened next, so that was kind of my favorite save. Roman has certainly put together an impressive highlight reel in his 27 starts this year. He'll get a chance for more highlights on Saturday when FC Cincinnati plays in their first ever MLS playoff game against the New York Red Bulls at noon. We'll talk about that game more as we roll along yeah. through the show. But first things first, we step aside and take a break and we hear from the head coach, Pat Noonan, when we return. Welcome back to our FC Cincinnati playoff preview show. The Orange and Blue getting set to take on the New York Red Bulls tomorrow at noon in the 4-5 game at Red Bull Arena. Pat Noonan has pretty much gone to the playoffs, Kevin, every single year he's been involved with MLS. He's only missed out once on the playoffs as a player or, in a, or a coach. Now he's in as the head coach of FC Cincinnati. He promised to change the culture when he was hired in December, and he has done that in 10 months. Yeah, he's a winner, right? I think that's the best way to describe it. Um, not just with, with kind of uh, his words, but all of the actions. You know, he's kind of stated his plan. I think he's been very black and white, laid out kind of the goals for the team. And, and so far, he's accomplished that. There's a lot that kind of goes into the background of Pat Noonan. Uh, I think there's a lot as far as like his past experiences and performances, uh, obviously as a professional, as a coach, as a player. And he's been able to take that and apply it this season uh, across this team. It's been fantastic to see. Well, he's brought a winning mentality to an FC Cincinnati team that very much needed it. Let's sit down with the head coach. Coach, it's easy to say when you're introduced at a press conference that you're going to come in and you're going to change culture and you're going to bring a winning mentality. It's a lot harder to accomplish that. And you've been able to do that in, in 10 months. How so? Time, you know, 10 months is a, is a long time. It takes time to implement things, to, to get ideas across to players, to staff. And so whether it was how we wanted to play on the field or what we wanted the culture to look like off the field over these 10 months, that's improved slowly. Right. It wasn't perfect at the beginning. No. There was a lot of uh, tough moments still, but I think it was guys buying into some of the things we were asking. And, and slowly you, you see how I operate, how the staff operates, how we treat people, how the expectations are for, for us to treat each other. And I think that has probably helped in the progress that we've made on and off the field. Good news is one game does not make a season, right? Right. What do you remember from after game one and, and reassessing things moving forward? The score line was bad. Right. We know that. I think it started, you know, with an early mistake and we got punished and that, that just creeps doubt into the mind. But I think there was a lot of good things that actually happened on the field that day. The results weren't there. And so we have to look past negative results and, and see some of the things that were happening well and what can we adjust to be able to, to turn some of those losses into wins. And I think we were able to do that 
early on in a way that brought some confidence to a, a group that desperately needed it. Week three at Orlando, first win as a head coach, first win for this new group, and Brandon Vasquez gets a brace. Where in the season did you realize this could be a really special year for Brandon? That's a good question, because I, I wouldn't say it was a strong preseason from Brandon in terms of production. And don't get me wrong, he's an incredible teammate, a great player to be able to coach. But there were things that, in terms of confidence, he needed to improve on, getting past mistakes, being able to move on. So those were some of the early struggles, and then finishing off chances, that wasn't there early on. Fast forward to the Orlando game, and you saw um, some really good finishes from him. I think that was probably the start of, okay, you know, this player has the capability of scoring some, some big goals, and in different ways. But I think that was a slow progression in terms of where Brandon's at now, of him being able to continuously improve. And that's a credit to him and the work that he put in to improve on how he runs in the box, how he uh, defends as the first line of pressure, um, how he improves his mentality when things aren't going his way. Those have all been things that he's worked on and improved. When we sat down in Florida in February, we didn't talk about Roman Celentano will be the starting goalkeeper come October for FC Cincinnati. But you made the decision in April when Al got hurt to have the confidence to say, hey, you're going to start against a really good LAFC team on national TV. Why did you feel back in April that you knew you could put him in there? Well, first off, I won't take all the credit for that. <laughs> you know, those are conversations with Paul Rogers, who does right. an incredible job with our entire goalkeeping crew to improve each goalkeeper that we have. So it was unfortunate with Alec going down, but it opened the door for Roman to get an opportunity to, to show what he was about. And he stepped in and had a, a game where eyebrows start to raise. And so it was certainly a good first game for Roman to show what he's about. When we reflect back on this year and, and look at the different victories and the solid results, different guys have stepped up at different times. Is that reflective of what you and your staff have asked of the group? I think so. I, I think we're, we try to be as fair as possible in, in how we assess players. Certainly you're going to have guys that have a longer leash based on previous years, experience, production, all of those things. But if guys put in the work, if we think the mentality is strong, you're going to get an opportunity. And if you weren't a starter, how do you become a starter? If you weren't in the 20, what kind of work do you need to put in to, to improve your standing within the group? And I think guys have, uh, you know, for the most part bought into that and, and earned the opportunities that they've been given. You put in your work to move over a chair, right, and be a head coach. In your first year leading a team, how have you grown? I've learned a lot in a short amount of time as far as the constant communication that you need to have with, with your staff, with players, to be on the same page. Being able to figure out how to manage different departments and, and having different conversations, whether that's with you know, medical, sports science, whether it's talking to you. You, you, you build relationships over that time. And you, you understand better how to manage things so that, you know, when you're, when you're asked to do things that are away from just the coaching, you, you have a better feel of, of how to manage those things. I think that's where I've probably grown the most. You obviously brought in Dom Kinnear, Kenny Arena, you mentioned Paul. Let's not forget Ricky. And Ricky. And Ricky. How important has it been to have those minds when you're on the bench to look over your shoulder and, and know you have reliable voices in your ear? I'm very fortunate to have the staff that I'm able to work with. The experience and, and success that these coaches bring to our staff, to this club, have helped me in so many ways. When I need to ask questions, I look over and I say, what would you, would you, what would you have done? You know, it would be silly not to utilize these coaches to help me make the best decision right. possible. And the amount of work that these guys put in to better the product on and off the field for FCC goes unnoticed in a lot of ways. And I hope I give them enough credit, but they've been outstanding. What's the best lesson you've learned in your first year as a head coach? I think in terms of coach-player relationships, the importance of, of having constant dialogue. There are probably conversations that I didn't have at, at certain times with players to help them understand why they're in the position they are, good or bad, and, and maybe just expecting them to understand it. It's, it's easy to, to think about the starting 11, but what do the reserves uh, mentalities look like? Where are their minds at um, when they're not hearing from me? You don't want to have too many conversations about this is why you're in this position. Sometimes you just want to let them have their time and space to improve, to show you that they deserve more. But I could certainly have had more conversations 
with, with players along the way to, to just be on the same page and give them peace of mind of this is the situation and this is how you can improve it. What was your favorite moment of the season? Hopefully we're waiting on it. But up to this point, the win at home against Philly was a memorable one and just how we went about that game and uh, the overall team performance. But the, the game day environment and when we win is, those are always memorable evenings. But the Philly game was, that was a special one. But again, I hope we're waiting on it. Well, there'll be an opportunity for more memorable moments starting on Saturday in the 2022 MLS Cup playoffs for Pat Noonan and his squad. Certainly exciting times for the orange and blue. We step aside and take a break. When we return on the other side, a conversation with defensive midfielder Obito Wobodo. Tonight's show is brought to you by Chick-fil-A and by Cintas. There have certainly been many impressive moments of this 2022 season for FC Cincinnati, both out on the field here at TQL Stadium and across Major League Soccer. There's also been impressive moments off the field in the way they have built this roster. And Kevin, we knew they needed a big time six and they got one in Nigerian Obina Wobodo. Yeah, I think Obina brings something very different to this team. I think um, he's a complete midfielder, you know, fantastic both sides of the ball, defensively understands, you know, space, he's got a, a high IQ, but also very tenacious in the tackle. And in the attack as well, you know, he penetrates well. He can find space, a good connector of, of passes too. And it's what really FC since I've been missing. Yeah, and he made an impact right away. But how would he transition to MLS? Let's find out in his words with Alex Steck. Obi, how was your first season in MLS? Well, I, I can say it's, it's good. And I, I can also say it's getting better. And I, I feel like I'm, I'm getting used to it. And I, I'm still going to get more comfortable and more used to it as time goes on. But I feel like the first year, it's okay. And um, I'm, I'm happy. Well, from a, a viewer's perspective, watching you play, it certainly doesn't look like you're still getting used to things. How were you able to adapt so quickly? You fit right in. I feel like it's easy to adapt every, anywhere because I just have only one mindset, which is to give my best. I try to be disciplined. I try to play according to instructions. I, I try not to complicate um, things a lot. I try to play according to the team plan. And I feel like, like with this, I can easily adapt in, in, in any way. You're always giving your all. You speak about that discipline. What do you think has been key in your success in you being such an impact player on this team? Well, I, I feel like what I just said, being um, trying to give my best, and I, and I believe that in any, in any way or in any kind of job, when you give your best, most times you, you, you get the reward, even if it didn't come directly from you, but it comes from around. And I, I feel like this is like an energy that affects or brings impacts in anywhere you come. If you try to give your best and have an open mind, it always have a good um, positivity part in the in 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 like in your surroundings in in anywhere you are. So I feel like this is just what is happening, and I believe that the more it gets circulated, the more better it gets. Did you have a favorite moment from this season? Well, I have few. I have few, not just one. I have. Um, especially at home, uh, my, my first home game. Yeah, it was um, against Toronto, which we won at home. It was like what I would say my favorite, my most favorite uh, moment, seeing, my, seeing the fans, 
and also some surprises from some of the fans. And that was my favorite and also the, the game we won 6-0, seeing how happy the fans was, seeing how the atmosphere was reacting to the victory and how everyone was, was so happy and smiling and cheering. It was one of my favorite and part of the season. I'm glad you're making friends outside of the team. And I know you were really close with Harris Madunian and you guys were buddies. And since he left, who have you kind of become closer with? Do you feel like your personality is coming out more? Because we see it. Well, I, I, I feel like since he left, I didn't just um, meet and um, have someone to be more closer to. But I have a lot of people to be more closer to. You know, I have a lot of people like teammates that I I was closer to before, but we got closer more now, and not just one person, but a lot, you know, many, so that's good. And what are your goals for next year, knowing that you are a key piece of this team? Well, like I said before, that I'm trying to, to get better in every aspect, and my goal for next year is nothing less than trying to make sure that whatever we are able to achieve, this past season uh, is just going to be like a first step that from next season is going to be much more better. The standard will be much more higher. The level will be higher and then I believe that the, the impact in we are making the team is going to be more higher than whatever we are able to achieve with this past season. Well, I think it's fair to say his impact has been important for the orange and blue this year. And if it's even better in 2023, everyone will be just okay with that. FC Cincinnati won 12 games this season. They scored 64 goals. But what were Kevin's most memorable moments? Let's find out on the other side of this break. Twelve wins in the books already for FC Cincinnati in 2022, and they've qualified for the MLS Cup playoffs. Tom Glitter back alongside my broadcast partner, Kevin McCluskey. We'll have all the action for you tomorrow on Star 64 at noon when the Orange and Blue take on the New York Red Bulls. So there have been great moments. We've had great crowds here at TQL Stadium. Kevin, let's go through your top three moments of this season so far and start with number three. What do you got? It has to be the bounce back, I think. Obviously, the, the game against Austin was disappointing and, yes. and coming back. Then to Orlando and getting that big time win, Brandon Vasquez getting two goals. That was such an important moment, not just for Brandon Vasquez, but for this team and obviously this club. Yeah, no question. Cincinnati had given up six goals at that point and had two losses, and no doubt it propelled them in the early part of the season. Let's go to number two and maybe a little bit later in the season. What do you have for the Orange and Blue? Well, it has to be the Philadelphia game here at TQL Stadium. I, I think as far as a complete performance at home in front of the home fans, it's as close as we've seen all season. Uh, I don't want to say perfect because hopefully we see better, but it was certainly an inspiring and big time moment for the club. We sat at this desk after the game and talked about it as the best win and certainly the most complete win in FC Cincinnati's Major League Soccer history. And I think that still stands today. All right, number one, I don't think we're going to have any surprises, but hit me. Well, it, it has to be the playoff win or the birth win against DC United. I, I think, you know, just in fashion, typical fashion of FC Cincinnati, lots of goals, lots of attacking uh, action. But most importantly, a big historic moment, a great moment for the fans, the club, and the ownership group. Well, we get back to interviews when we return on the other side of the break, and a guy who had plenty of memorable moments, Brandon Vasquez, will join us. Stay tuned. When you look back and reflect on the 2022 season, there's probably a couple different guys who could be tabbed for breakout player of the year but I think Brandon Vasquez has a pretty good case for that award and Kevin 18 goals eight assists and he left his mark on Major League Soccer this season he's been incredible uh, I think just the development uh, the maturity and, and kind of the production the attacking production obviously especially 
Uh, it, it's been amazing to see. I, I think, you know, you looked at the player last season, um, you know, trying to find his way, trying to, to do some consistent things right, and it didn't happen. But for this season, you know, obviously the coaching staff have made a, a big impact on that, and, and credit to Brandon, it's all come together, and we've seen just what he what he can do and, and the potential that he brings. Well, Brandon's grateful for the opportunities he's been given in Cincinnati, and no doubt the supporters are grateful to have him in orange and blue. All right, Brandon, what has this development this season meant for you, for your career, for your confidence and everything else? Yeah, a lot, you know. I mean, this year has brought a lot of positivity, a lot of good stuff. So development-wise, I think it's been one of those years I've been waiting for for a long time. You had those four goals last year. You're given a chance to finally start last nine games of the year. You score four times. Did this preseason feel different coming off what you did at the end of last season? Yeah, of course, you know, coming into this preseason, um, I was really hungry to keep going and uh, start right where I had left off the, the season prior. So yeah, I, um, this, this preseason felt like I had something to prove and I came in, the squad looked really good and, um, you know, I think we've showed it this season. I think we've uh, come out and put it onto the pitch. It was your third time around, right? FC Cincinnati in preseason. Yeah, yeah. Three very different circumstances yep. for each season. Yep, exactly. How much different with Pat and his staff in was the culture, was the dressing room, and everything else coming into this year? Yeah, it, I mean, completely different. It's uh, this coaching staff coming in switched everything around um, from the winning mentality to holding everybody accountable, you know. Everybody had to work on the field to get results and um, and everybody understood what they had to do when we stepped onto the field. Um, so, yeah, it was it was an incredible thing to see this place turn around so quickly and uh, being able to give results. Dom Kinnear's long time coach in this league, right? Yeah. Endless experience in this league and you two connected right away. Yeah. A, how did you make that connection? And B, what has his influence meant for this season? Yeah, you know, Dom is, Dom is an incredible coach. Um, coming in, uh, he spoke to me right away. Um, told me that he, he saw what I had in me and saw my talent and we, we got to work right away. So um, as soon as we started working, I could tell like uh, he was a different kind of coach that I haven't had before, you know, he was, um, he was, I mean, working with me on every aspect of the game, you know, outside of the field, doing video, on the field, hold the play, finishing, doing all the, doing all the small stuff that I hadn't had other coaches, uh, like, work with me before. So, um, yeah, working with him has been a privilege, and uh, I hope we get to work together for a long time. The brace at Orlando, week three, two tough games to start the season, right? Yeah. You go there, you get a game winner, when did you get the feeling that this might be a special season for you? I think right after that game, you know, the first two games of the season, we hadn't scored. Um, so going into that third game, scoring a brace, beating a really good team in Orlando, I thought, you know, like with that kind of performance that we put up that night, if we, if we could keep doing that, if, if I could keep scoring that way, that we can get Cincinnati in the playoffs. So, um, after that, it was just one of those boosts that the team needed just to, just so that we can all see that we, we are that caliber of team that can, that can beat a great team like Orlando at, in, at their home, so yeah. How do you feel you've grown as a professional this season? A lot, you know, I think um, I've had to find that balance of pushing myself to work as, as hard as I can, but at the same time, take care of my body and. And, uh, you know, with the season having so many games in such a short period of time, it's, uh, I've, yeah, I've had to find that balance. So it's, it's uh, I've grown, I've grown a lot this year. And um, yeah, I've, yeah, the experience like this is uh, something that definitely just helped me be better. Cincinnati loves you, right? I mean, you've seen the response this year. You score goals, the roof gets blown off the stadium every single time. What has that response this season from the supporters meant to you? So much, you know. Um, makes me love this city even more. And uh, 
and it makes me want to work even harder for them. Um, so, yeah, every time I score and I hear the TQL Stadium erupt, it's it's an incredible feeling, and you know, it, uh, it yeah, like I said, it makes me want to work even harder and uh, do it for years to come. What's your favorite goal this season? That's a good question. Um, Scoring against Columbus here at home and here in that stadium we rubbed mm. was pretty cool. Um, but it wasn't, we didn't win that game, so that one, so. Hmm. The game winner at the question. death against Minnesota yeah. is pretty good. Yeah, I was just thinking that. That was a Don good Don Baji trying to knock you out at Orlando, I mean, we talked about that game. <laughs> yeah, he, he shot that in the fire. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I haven't thought about that too much. Look, all the goals this season after nine in five years to yeah. start your MLS career. Yeah. Like, take me through the patience of the last five years and waiting behind other guys to get the chance to be the man. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think patience is my virtue, I guess. I had to learn that, you know, I had never, I had never been behind anyone in my life until I went to Atlanta, so it was, it was hard, but yeah, the past five years have been, they've been a lesson that I've needed, you know. Um, it's taught me to keep my head down, keep working hard, um, and be prepared, because you never know when your chance is gonna be called upon, you know. You always have to be at your best, um, always. Um, and it's taught me to, to work harder than than everybody else. It's taught me to put in the extra work that not everybody puts in and it's taught me to be grateful for where I am today and, and not letting that go. Brandon was rewarded for his great play all season long with a new contract from general manager Chris Albright. How did he build this roster and get the team to the playoffs? Well, let's find out when we return to our 2022 playoff preview. Tonight's show is brought to you by Penn Station and Procter & Gamble. General Manager Chris Albright was hired on October 4th of 2021 and certainly had a few big tasks in front of him, including hiring a head coach and fixing some of the roster issues that FC Cincinnati faced. Kevin, when you look back at his first year, he's pushed all the buttons really in the right way yeah no he's uh he's hit a home run uh, as yeah, they say absolutely. right uh, i think everything that he's kind of touched is is turned to gold uh, i think for chris you know very definitive plan uh, clear vision and you know obviously it's it's quite clear for everyone to see kind of what that vision is and making it a reality well his first task was finding that head coach and then finding the right guys to have on the bench and he hit on all of the above. Chris, you've been here just over one year. How would you assess year one as general manager? Uh, I think we've made some progress. Uh, our biggest goal, I think, was uh, what we told the fans is that we wanted to feel different um, and, uh, and being in the stadium uh, without sort of promising uh, certain statistics or goals or wins, um, really just a uh, a feel uh, around the club that, that we were heading in the right direction. Um, and, I, and I think we are. Uh, I think the coaching staff and is a big part of that. Uh, I think a lot of the players we brought in have helped kind of uh, help buoy the other talent that was already here. Uh, and I think we're set up to have continued success going forward. You wanted it to feel different. A big part of that was changing the culture here. What was key in making that happen? I, I think just being authentic, you know, kind of being myself, allowing the coaching staff to be to themselves. Uh, you know, I think we uh, we go about things a certain way and I think we, we, we treat people a certain way um, and there's expectations that uh, everyone else in the building does it the same all the way down through the players. You know, I think culture is all about people. And I think we, we hired a lot of good people both on and off the field. The product on the field, you know, helped us sort of push that, that culture forward. 
When you're looking back at this year, the infrastructure was, the foundation was already there. The infrastructure, the facilities, there was this desire to win and now you guys have fielded a team that's exciting to watch. Everyone wants to win. You see the desire out there. Do you feel like you've turned things around in the eyes of the fans? For us to, uh, you know, be a playoff contending team, you know, given where we, we came from as a club, uh, I, I think there were a lot of good strides there. Uh, I think at the same time, um, we didn't miss on any player signings. That, that's a big piece of, of setting yourself up to have kind of a sustainable winning product. Um, and so I think some of those key additions, uh, you know, coupled with turning around results, set us up to, uh, you know, hopefully continue our success in the future. You have over two decades of MLS experience, both as a player and on the technical side. Was there a learning curve at all for you in your first year as general manager being the guy? Uh, again, you know, maybe that's for my bosses to, uh, to assess, but I, I, don't, I don't think so. Uh, you know, I think uh, I was probably ready for this a few years earlier. Um, that being said, I think the, the last couple years in Philadelphia, I think positioned me to, to even uh, be more ready and more prepared for a job like this. It's a big job because it's, uh, it's a club with a lot of ambition, with ambitious owners and with in incredible facilities, with, with great fans and with that comes pressure. Um, but I think we, we just leaned on what we knew how to do and how we identified players and, and how we sort of treat people and, and really focusing on, on that. Um, and so I think, you know, early on, uh, just leaning on the things that uh, I always say that my parents taught me when I was a, when I was a kid, uh, I think, you know, bought us a lot of sort of leeway early on to, and buy-in from, from players and staff. And, uh, you know, we'll continue to, to, to try to get better at those things. Well, some of the additions have certainly helped the team this season, Obi Wobodo and Matt Miazga. How different will we see the roster looking next year, do you think? Well, again, I think, uh, our goal was really to, to establish a core um, of players that when you think about FC Cincinnati, you think about these five or six players. We went a long way this year in establishing that. Now we'll, we'll get some more roster flexibility to be able to go out and, and then augment those other pieces around the core. And so now I think a lot of our practices uh, as a group, as a club are more established. So when that same group comes back next year, I think expectations are gonna be more clear and that's, that's a good place to build from. Since you guys have that established group and you're familiar working with one another, what are your objectives this off season? To continue to, to push the, the player pathway uh, from our academy through our first team, uh, you know, something that we've, we've started to build on this year, but to be able to, to kind of push down our methodology to make sure our young players are, are understanding how our first team wants to play. You know, continue to grow FCC too, uh, that's, that's important. Um, in, in that step in between both the, you know, the academy and the first team. And then with the first team is continue to, to, to sign good players. It's getting more competitive in, in MLS. Uh, more teams are getting better at, at identifying what works in this league. And so it'll, it'll continue to, to be a challenge. Uh, but I think if we do that like we've done in the past and lean on uh, some of the processes that, we've, that we have, then we should be positioned to continue to, to add good players and, and help our staff. I'm sure that will carry on from the off season into next year, but what are your goals for year two and, and beyond that? What do they look like and, and how different is it from when you first got here? Have those changed at all? Again, I think we're a little bit ahead of schedule, a little bit ahead of where I thought we would be. That's a good thing. Um, with that, I understand that expectations change. That's just the nature of pro sports. You know, I think in year two, Having that foundation, uh, I, I think there's some things we can kind of clean up a little bit. You know, when you're when you're going into something year one, you're sort of uh, building the plane as you're flying it a bit, uh, which is what we did this year. And I think uh, we'll have the plane built in year two and be able to kind of just add and 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 tweak some processes and and then how we we go about things to. Uh, to make us more efficient. And w again, what that leads to on the field, in the end, the fans are gonna be able to judge that. All right, thank you, Alex. One more segment still to come here in our FC Cincinnati playoff preview. We will chat with the captain, Luciano Acosta, as well as give you a preview of the New York 
Red Bulls. That's coming your way in 60 seconds. Welcome back to our FC Cincinnati playoff preview special. Tom Glider alongside Kevin McCluskey will have all the action for you at noon tomorrow along with our sideline reporter Alex Steck. Now Kevin, Luciano Acosta was brought in to have seasons just like this, right? 10 goals, 19 assists, and he played like one of the best in the league this season. Uh, he's been fantastic, uh, an incredible talent, for sure. Everybody's seen that, but as far as the influence uh, in the attack, as far as his influence and the other players kind of around him too, uh, and just the development of his leadership on the field, I think it's been great to see. Well, Pat Noonan entrusted him with that leadership by giving him the captain's armband going into the Austin game. He rewarded his head coach with a career season. You wore that captain's armband last year, but a new coach this year, right? Yeah. So you didn't know until right before the Austin game if that was going to be the case. What did it mean for you, confidence-wise, that he gave you that captain's armband, that he believed in you? When a new coach come, everything is different. Uh, and you don't know if, if you are captain or if you, are, or if you like him. And he, he, he made it the first time he, he get he gave me a lot of confidence. So. What has Pat Noonan meant for the group and for the dressing room as your head coach? He's a, a, good, uh, a good person. When I meet him the first time, I say, wow, he's a, a great coach. He learned we, we us. Uh, he's the first experience like a coach, but he, he's an amazing coach. When did you have a feeling that this team could do something special this season? When we started in preseason. The first day in the preseason, I, I saw the difference. I saw the, the energy. We feel different in everything. So in the first day, I'm, I feel different. I feel with a lot of energy. We try to, to make a good relationship, and we start in the preseason. When you score at TQL Stadium, 26,000 fans. We see your emotion, right? Your son, your family, they're sitting right by the pitch. The fans are screaming for you. What's that feeling like? Many, many things come to my When I was younger and I, I came to go to the, the stadium, and now my son is, is there, my family, my wife. Uh, when I celebrate my goals with, with my family, I, I think in how I come to, to this scenario. You have young teammates in Brenner and Alvaro, right, who've grown this year and, and contributed to the team's success. How much have you needed to be a leader for those guys? They are a good players. So, but as, as a captain, I'm trying to bring Alvaro to my home to make easy live in Cincinnati. You know? If you are captain and leadership, you need to bring a group, a, a person on the side of it. What's your favorite moment from the season? Ooh when we win 6-0 against San Jose. We make history. Acosta with his right foot buries it! 3-0 to the orange and blue! Returning to the MLS Cup playoffs was important for Luciano Acosta. You could see it at the end of the game as he went down. was very emotional at his former home of Audi Field. So the season for the first time in Major League Soccer does not end after 34 games. And that means FC Cincinnati has a date, Kevin, with the New York Red Bulls, a team that they drew twice during the regular season, 1-1 here at TQL Stadium in July, 1-1 at Red Bull Arena in August. What do you make of this matchup? Uh, well, hopefully it's not controversial, uh, okay. I think, but that, that's one word that, that springs to mind uh, when we faced Red Bull in the past. A tough team to play against. Uh, obviously, playing at home as well is, is always a difficult uh, environment to go into. Uh, but a team that's very physical, a team that doesn't give kind of FC Cincinnati a ton of space. So I, I think the key has been in the preparations and get ready for this game tomorrow. Red Bull Arena, one of the toughest places to play in Major League Soccer. That's been the case over the past decade. FC Cincinnati scored first in both of the games against New York and then conceded an equalizer. So if the orange and blue go to Harrison, New Jersey, and advance to take on the Philadelphia Union in the second round. What did they do to make that happen? 
Well, listen, the first thing, I think this team is very familiar with that environment, right? They, yeah. They've been there many times, uh, I think. So they're, they're going to be familiar with that. They have to take care of the, the tactical game plan. You know, I think, you know, Pat's going to have a, a very clear plan. Um, I think they've, they've got to execute. They've got to play their best game of the season. And they can do that. And I think they'll get chances. I think if they can create those chances and finish them, that's a great thing. And then defensively, they've got to be tight. They've got to be secure. Well, Matt Miazga scored in that game at Red Bull Arena, his return to New Jersey in August. And FC Cincinnati will be looking for a big performance for an opportunity to play the Philadelphia Union in the second round. There's exactly one game in the Eastern Conference that can be televised in local market. And guess what? That's FC Cincinnati's playoff appearance, which means we'll have all the action for you tomorrow at noon on Star 64 when Kevin, Alex, and I touch down in Harrison New Jersey. For my broadcast partner, Kevin McCluskey, for our sideline reporter, Alex Steck, appreciate all the guests joining us tonight. Thanks so much for tuning in to the 2022 FC Cincinnati playoff preview. We'll see you tomorrow at noon.